Thank you for joining me today. My name is Mary Beth Hartlev, the CEO of Prism HR Consulting. And throughout the month of March, I have the opportunity to interview several inspiring women from around the world in celebration of Women's History Month. Women's History Month theme this year is providing healing and promoting hope as both a tribute to the ceaseless work of caregivers and frontline workers during this ongoing pandemic, and also a recognition of the thousands of ways that women from all cultures have provided both healing and hope throughout history. Today, I am excited to introduce you to Linda Rakow, joined the National Atomic Testing Museum Board of Trustees in the fall of 2015, and she now serves as vice chair. She started her career at the Nevada test site in 1975 as an environmental analyst and then held various other management positions over the next 10 years until leaving the NTS in 85. She then joined the Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory as a senior budget analyst. During her 25 years at Livermore Lab, she held various executive management positions of increasing responsibility, culminating in becoming chief financial officer in 2005. In 2010, she left Livermore Lab to become the chief financial officer at Stanford's Linear Accelerator Laboratory, where she spent three years and then retired in 2014. She holds a bachelor's degree in microbiology from the College of Charleston, South Carolina, and an MBA from the University of the Pacific in Stockton, California. Lyndon now lives in Las Vegas, enjoys community service, traveling, and spending time with her family. Linda, I want to welcome you. Thank you so much for your time today. Thank you, Mary Beth. It's a pleasure to be here today. So I appreciate this. And we've known each other going on a few years now. So you certainly have a very impressive career history. And I know we share a love and a passion of travel. And you've yes. had quite your own adventures traveling the globe as well. Um, before we get into some of the, the questions about your, your hobbies and things, i really curious, tell us more about your background and, and how you came into the industry and, and profession that you did. I mean, how did you wind up at, at the Nevada test site? Oh, well, you know, uh, sometimes life takes us on circuitous paths. It's not always the straightaway. Um, we might plan for that, but uh, life intervenes. So in my case, it did. Um, when I was uh, a junior in high school, my parents uh, moved to Los Alamos, New Mexico. My dad went to work for the lab there. And that was my first exposure to the, say, the, the nuclear defense business Um I then went on to, to college, but eventually after I got married, uh, ended up back in Las Vegas. My husband's parents actually lived in Las Vegas. And so we, they knew people at the Nevada test site. So we both um, got our first, I would say first uh, meaningful jobs at the Nevada test site. And sort of the rest for me is history. I've stayed in that domain, uh, the labs and the test site uh, for the better part of 40 plus years. And so that's really how it happened for me. It started, you know, at Los Alamos when I was a kid. Wow, that's that's a great story. And so tell us, I mean, what, what was it like to work at the test site? Well, it was amazing. Uh, test site is a very unique place. Um, more than about 1,400 um, uh, square miles of uh, land out there that uh, is uh, pockmarked with the, uh, uh, the after effects of underground nuclear testing and then nu uh, atmospheric, no, excuse me, atmospheric testing before and then underground testing, which, you know, stopped um, in the later years. But I started out as an environmental analyst. So it was a, a fun job. We, we used to go out to the field, uh, extensively work in the field to collect uh, animals, uh, plants, and we would test them for the effects of radiation uh -huh. uptake um, on the small animals and the plants. And then um, for several years, that information was published and I would present reports uh, during the time I worked there. So that's how I got started as a, a scientist working in a scientific field, but then it sort of gradually evolved into management. Again, another circuitous route that led me um, into the financial side of things. So, but the really fun part at the test site was um, was working 
out there in the field. Um, the last five years, I did work uh, mostly downtown and uh, was part of the um, collection of all of the dosimetry records in the, for the United States, mm -hmm. all of the atmospheric testing, which is now uh, part of the historical archives that are housed um, at, by the National Atomic Testing Museum, of which I'm a board member. So it just, uh, you know, interesting how it all kind of uh, became a circular path for me. Yes, yes. And, and so I, I love the idea that, you know, we're preserving history. And, and speaking of, you know, nuclear testing, I mean, how, how do you see that being relevant today? Well, it's, it's very relevant, although it's different. The political climate, you know, of the world has changed. Um, so it's not like it was during the Cold War, but there is still an obvious need to, um, you know, have a safe and secure uh, stockpile. We have it. We, you know, as long as we have it, we need to ensure that it is safe and reliable, whatever your, you know, feelings are on the morality of the issue. So uh, that's really what the test site has been in the forefront of uh, back in the day of testing uh, devices. And now uh, to ensure safety and reliability through this stockpile stewardship program, which is um, something that uh, a lot of which can only be done at the Nevada test site. Um, it has the space the lack of people and the basically all of the um, the elements that you know make it just right for some of the the kinds of tests that need to go on that are part of the stockpile stewardship program. Okay, and so I know you know community service is a, a large part of, of what you do and volunteering, and you're vice chair for the National Atomic Testing Museum. So how did you wind up there? And <laughs> tell us about the museum. Well, I didn't know it was going to go this way when I uh, first inquired back in um, early in 2015. I had been retired here a few years and had uh, getting involved in some voluntary, you know, um, contribution to the community was on my mind. And I had heard about the museum, had been over there and really thought that that would be a perfect way for me to contribute, to give back um, what I had learned and the experience that I had gained over the years. So making contact and uh, getting involved was what I pursued. And it took, uh, took a while to uh, make sure that it was a right fit for me and for them. But um, I tell you, I've, I've been able to reconnect with people that I hadn't seen in the better part of 30 years since I you know, left working at the test site. Um, so many connections and so many uh, interesting things to get involved in. And now, uh, of course, the museum is it's an amazing place, but we're trying to make it even more amazing by uh, moving to a new location and being able to expand the exhibits and create more immersive interactive exhibits. So I'm really excited about that. That's um, kind of what I'm uh, focusing on now uh, as one of the execs. And I really hoping that we're going to be successful in getting a new museum to move into yeah. and expand our horizons. That's exciting times and uh, it's wonderful for locals and visitors alike. Uh, to tap into that part of Vegas history. So um, exactly. yeah, I, I think it's great. And the museum's wonderful. If, if uh, any of our listeners have not visited, I highly recommend it. Um, so, you know, all of the success, an incredible career, you know, what or whom do you attribute your success to? Well, there's so many people that, um, you know, that helped me. Uh, I just have to say that I never lost sight of the fact that um, trying to pursue a career um, in management, kind of trying to break through the glass ceiling and, you know, get into what was, you know, then and it still is at some level a man's world, uh, required a lot of persistence and a lot of help. And I never forgot that, um, you know, women need to help other women and need to be supportive of women uh, because that can make all of the difference. Uh, fighting a fight together, we can be successful. Fighting on our own, it's it's a lot more difficult. So I just um, thank everyone that you know really did believe in me and 
support me, but you have to be persistent. Don't give up on your dreams. Don't give up on your goals. And um, I might also say that uh, getting an education, it can be very important depending upon what your, you know, your objective is, what, where you're trying to get to. Uh, for me, you know, going back to school and getting an MBA after my kids were grown and gone made a huge difference because it enabled me to become the chief financial officer and that culminated my, my career. So I didn't know at the time it was a personal goal just to get an MBA, but it made all the difference in my future. Sometimes you don't know, uh, you just have to set a, you know, set out on a path and, and believe that it's going to get you where you want to go. Great. And great advice. And I, I think you've shattered a few ceilings. So congratulations. I, yeah. I first <laughs> uh, woman CFO at uh, one of the wow. laboratories and, uh, and now uh, Lawrence Livermore lab has their first female lab director, which is uh, an astonishing achievement. Uh, again, breaking a, a ceiling that's long yeah. held and <laughs> firm, you yeah. know, yeah, I, I, I definitely think that we lift each other up, right? And, and yes. those that come before us pave the way in, in many mm -hmm. regards. So, I mean, congratulations to that. You're, you're an incredible role model to, to all of us. Oh, well, thank you. Um, one, of, one of the things, right, we're doing this for Women's History Month. And again, that theme is providing healing, promoting hope. And I'm curious, Linda, how does, how does that theme resonate with you both personally and professionally? Well, um, you know, I'm not in the, the healthcare business and that's, you know, so many women are making such a huge difference today in, in this environment we're in of, of COVID. But um, again, the theme of women um, sticking together and supporting one another, that, that hope for the future, it's, it makes all the difference. And I can only um, sort of refer back to a, a personal situation. You know, my daughter is a, a family physician. Um, she, uh, I think I was a role model for her. And uh, when we talk about it, I, I tell her some of the stories of, you know, how hard it was to, you know, kind of get to the top um, back in the day. And, you know, her comment was, well, mom, it's, it wasn't that hard for me. And all I can say is I'm so glad and you can just thank me <laughs> for that. <laughs> <laughs> because uh, many of us uh, sort of, you know, struggled so that now the young women of today and in the future can be whatever they want to be. And they don't have to, you know, live in fear of, you know, that uh, they're going to be held back. Mm -hmm. so. and, and to that, to that end, that's a perfect segue, because um, I have always believed that as women, we have a huge responsibility in terms of being role models to uh, other women and to our girls um, yes. and, and how we conduct ourselves and how we perform on the job, it all matters. And, yeah. and in some ways, um, there's a higher standard <laughs> placed on us. Mm -hmm. um, but my, my question to you is, you know, as a role model and including young women and girls, what is one piece of advice that you would like to share with us? Well, I guess um, <clears throat> for me, it was um, be persistent about pursuing your goals and don't let anything uh, hold you back. Don't, don't, um, you know, don't be disappointed when there are setbacks because you can work through them. And that, but it does take that kind of persistence uh, if you're going to make it out there. There's still a lot of barriers, um, and we still have a ways to go. But uh, you fight the good fight, and you just don't give up. Mm -hmm. And I think that served me well more so than it wasn't about being smarter. It wasn't being about being you know just whatever. <clears throat> it was about. Uh, being persistent and not giving up and finding other ways. If I can't get there one way, I can get there another way. And um, just make sure you have a moral compass for that. That that's an interesting point and and an excellent <laughs> one. Yes, you, you definitely need the compass, right? Yeah. And other women to support you along the way. So, 
you know, Linda, I really appreciate you taking the time and thank you for all your contributions to our community and really being a wonderful role model for all of us. Um, if you enjoyed our interview, please share it, like, comment, um, and we'll see you again soon. Thank you, Linda. Thank you, Mary Beth. It's been a pleasure. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.